Hi, I'm Caroline. I work in the Children's Emergency Medicine Department, which, as you know, is uh, rather exciting and quite a wonderful place to work in. Things got curiouser and curiouser for us with COVID. We saw an extraordinary amount of pathology, which resulted in a flurry of academic activity. I'm also the chief investigator of Dimples. This is a national research project, which is led by BHRUT, looking at children and young people presenting to the emergency department during the pandemic. Now, Dimples is a research project that was born on the emergency medicine shop floor. Now, you don't often hear that being said to you. So I'd like to tell you the story of uh, Dimples, if I may. Normally, what happens in pediatric diabetes is that we get a, a of cases in winter with the winter viruses. Summer is a quiet time for us. Last July in the pandemic, we were seeing something different. We were seeing about three new onset pediatric cases in the emergency department. The children were coming in very sick with diabetic ketoacidosis, some with a pH less than um, seven, and they were also presenting with a very short duration of symptoms. There was a signal there. This, is, this isn't quite the way type 1 diabetes presents. So I did a local project with one of my lovely clinical fellows called Yvette. And as you can see here, there is a significant increase in decay in 2020 compared to um, the previous years. And this is pure BHR data. It made me wonder, is this completely in BHR or is it happening across other hospitals? I spoke to a couple of my endocrine consultants co colleagues and we initiated a network project. This network project covered 12 trusts across Greater London, across Kent and Brighton. And you can see that the same phenomena that we saw in BHR, the increase in decay, was seen across all these trusts. We saw 178 children and we looked at their characteristics and found many interesting things uh, which we published. This was also picked up in The Guardian in uh, March 2021. At the same time, when I was coordinating the network project, I started to write a research proposal for Dimples. This is way back in um, June uh, 2020. We launched Dimples in April 2021 from BHR, and the way it has taken off, um, we didn't expect that either. More than 50 NHS trusts have signed up in three months. We already have a large data set. And this is the first time that pediatric diabetes is being looked at from the eyes of, through the eyes of the emergency medicine clinician. So in a few months, we have some very exciting preliminary results for you. I ask, why is this important? And, um, I'm an endocrinologist who works in the children's emergency department. When you make a new diagnosis of pediatric diabetes, it is a watershed moment for the family. The child has to take several injections in the day and they have to do several blood tests. They have to think of every morsel of food that they eat. And the next day they have to wake up and do it all over again, which is really difficult. The incidence of pediatric type diabetes is increasing. Children come in decaying. And it really matters to these families until we find a cure for this condition. Every bit of clinical research matters. And really that's what drives me to do clinical research that matters to patients. And it's taken a pandemic for me to write a research proposal. There are multiple collateral effects of doing a research study in a hospital. Uh, one of that has been education and increase in knowledge, and also timely identification of these children who present with new onset diabetes. We had 58 children presenting with new onset diabetes in one year in the pandemic, one of the highest in, uh, in the country. And our boys and girls on the shop floor have identified all of them on the first presentation, which is no mean achievement when you think of the fact that they uh, often come masquerading as other illnesses like an appendicitis or a sepsis. So they've done really, really well. And there's also this uh, research culture which is now developed on the pediatric emergency shop floor. That curiosity among our junior doctors and nurses, which um, is really to be seen to be believed. We've had several publications. My first article was, pandemic article was commissioned by the archives, and this was to do with COVID. Um, I think I spent several months writing it because we didn't know much about this at that time and learned a lot as well. It's a clinician facing article meant for emergency pediatrics. This was followed by a publication in the BMJ and then in a, in a series of journals. So we know we wrote not only about pediatric diabetes, but also and one of my clinical fellows wrote about appendicitis in an eight month old. So once you start the ball rolling, it just keeps going on. As we were looking at the data of pediatric diabetes, I started to wonder why our attendances were so low in the pandemic compared to the pre-pandemic era. 
You see, this red line here is the pandemic attendance to pediatric ED, and this is the attendance in 2019. So on one hand, you have the adult ED, which is heaving with activity, and here you have a reduced pediatric attendances. That is not the case anymore. We are heaving now as well. So we looked at that data through what I'd like to talk of as COVID-19 lens. Example, um, I'll show you this data, which was done by one of our lovely IT consultants. See, in November and December and January, they were hardly seeing any bronchiolitis, which made me wonder, what is happening with these children? Where are they? So in this data, you can see that the red marks the pandemic attendance, which is very less. The blue is the normal attendance that we get in winter with bronchiolitis. So when you see the red, you know that there are so many RSV negative, um, RSV naive children in the community. So when they are exposed, when the lockdown lifts, then there's a pandemic that's going to happen. So that is predictable in March 2021 itself when this data was done. You see, this is completely BHR data and how much it teaches us straight away in predicting outcomes and what will happen. Another example I'd like to give is PIMS. PIMS is one of the serious but rare complications of COVID in children. I use the word rare very cautiously in BHR because nothing appears to be rare here at all. In this hospital, we've seen 14 cases over a period of one and a half months, which is a lot. In some hospitals, you might get to see one case in three months. So it made me wonder, why is it? Is this specific to this job? I went back to the Office of National Statistics and you can see the graphs here. This spike that we saw in December and January in Havering, this is laboratory confirmed SARS-CoV-2 positivity. We are far higher than England and even more than London. Exactly four weeks later, we had that flurry of PIMS cases presenting to pediatric ED, sort of confirming the geographical and the temporal relationship to COVID-19. So what started off as exploring the tales of pediatric diabetes ended up with looking at many, many stories from BHR. So what did we do with this data? Uh, we wrote up abstracts. We submitted five to the Royal College of Pediatrics. They were presented at the conference and they will be published next month. Um, there's Royal College of Emergency Medicine conference coming up in October, and six of our abstracts have been accepted there. I thought, why should we leave the endocrine group alone? So I sent two to the European Society of Pediatric Endocrinology. So they've accepted that and we'll be presenting in um, September. So we don't just cover pediatric diabetes, we look at everything, COVID, pediatric um, sepsis, and also the pediatric mental health. Normally, we would associate an emergency department with how busy it is. So the opportunities previously was limited, but I, I, I'd like to think that all that has changed. And previously, there was limited presenting to ED with diabetes in the pandemic. Dimples is going to change all that. Currently, I would say we have a strong culture of research in the emergency department at BHRUT. There's a real passion for it. We're quite driven. We presented our stories and national, regional, and international meetings. And we've been quite innovative with uh, the national study, Dimples, which is being led by BHR. But I think one of the aspects which I've enjoyed most is the mentorship and shared learning. When I was a junior doctor, my mentors believed in me sometimes more than I believed in myself. And they showed me how it was done. So as a consultant, I found this a great opportunity to give back. Amongst our research team, the hierarchy is absolutely fat, flat. All questions are welcome. No question is considered too simple. And the team have done me proud. We had 117 cases, which is the highest number in all the um, uh, trusts which have enrolled for dimples. And they finished it in two months flat, which is um, something amazing. And I think they've invested in me just as much as I've invested in them. And this bit of shared success, that has been really joyful. I'm all sweetness and light, don't I? But it's never like that. In uh, research, as in life, there are always challenges, obstacles, struggles. And I've had my fair share with my research studies. But what I've realized when uh, obstacles look insurmountable is that you never lose faith. You never lose sight of the bigger picture and why it's important and why it matters. And also to know that it will all be fine in the end. Um, I'm so thankful to my research team who have done, who have worked so hard, to Heidi, our RNI manager, who's worked so much for Dimples, 
to my lovely ED consultant colleagues, nurses, very supportive managers, doctors who have supported and sustained me, and to our wonderful medical director, Dr. Magda, who has always been so kind whenever I've gone to her with the success of her troubles. So um, thank you. That's all I've got. Thank you for listening. <laughs>